Hello everyone, Amy R. here with Prairie Paper and Ink, and today's card is mostly on time for this week's Color Throwdown Challenge. So I am doing some serious experimenting here. I have some Arteza watercolor paper, and then I have the Waffle Flower Always stamp set that I've literally had sitting beside my desk since it arrived like a month ago. And I pulled out the Ink on 3 Fade Out ink. I've had a lot of people asking me my thoughts on this ink. This ink is meant more for no line coloring, which is not my forte. <laughs> Mostly, like, I love the look of it. I just, I don't have the patience. However, I stamped the image twice with this. This ink is very, very light. So I stamped it twice because usually I've noticed when I stamp it once, I even I can barely see it. So I stamped it twice using my travel stamp platform. And then I use my heat tool just to speed up the drying process. If you're using this in any, and not just this ink, any sort of just really pale ink, um, I really like Simon Says Stamps, Barely Beige ink, but any really pale ink, if you are stamping it on, this usually just applies to any sort of form of watercolor. So if you're stamping this onto watercolor paper and the ink itself is still wet and you go to either watercolor or use markers like this or distress inks or whatever, if the ink is still wet, it will start really pulling at that watercolor or whatever you're using and you'll start getting that weird feathery edge. Now this doesn't happen all the time and it you got to kind of experiment to see what works for you. But that's what I was noticing with a lot of times when I would try the no line and I would get really frustrated is the edges kept getting really feathery looking and it was weird and I'm like, no, I just don't have time for this. But I noticed if I either let the ink dry or heat set it to dry it faster, um, when I would go to color it, I don't get that funny edge. So that's one thing. So, and like I said, I, I, I'm not the biggest fan. I just, oh, I put so much time into this and I really, I was really struggling with it because I don't have the patience for no line. It, I love seeing other designers, you know, I'll, I can sit and watch them forever, watch them do it. I think it's amazing. But when I'm doing it, I'm just, I get frustrated. I, I don't have the patience. So I started doing this as like proper no line watercolor. I started with just her face. This is also a very, a much more difficult image to do no line with in the sense that it's a, um, and a human image. Whereas when you're doing like flowers or whimsical characters, etc., they're a lot easier because you can just kind of let it go. But when you're doing people, there's, you know, skin tones and hair and da 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 da, da. So I'm using my Arteza Real Brush Pens. Um, a lot of people still asking. I haven't done a like an official review. I think this is like my third video using them though. I'm really liking them. So I started off with just coloring with the real brush pen and then like pulling out the color with my water brush. And by the time I really started getting to her hair, that's when I started just losing patience with doing every little tiny bit. Because especially with when you're doing no line coloring and it's watercolor, it's even more time consuming. Because it needs to le let each tiny little area dry before going on to the next because you don't want anything to bleed into each other and you want that definition, etc. Um, one of the perks, though, that I really like with this Fado ink and um, the Simon Says Barely Beige it does the same sort of a thing, is the stamped outline kind of absorbs the color. It doesn't feather it, like I said, with when you um, heat set it or anything, but it does absorb that. So you can see all those lines, which especially with an image like this specific image, I love the detail of all those lines. So that made it easier for me to cheat. That's why I'm just calling it faux, no line watercolor. <laughs> because I'm not actually, you know, taking that time to do each little piece, each little bit of definition. I'm kind of letting those stamped lines just take on that color and give me that definition and I'm not putting in much ever. Like by the time I got to her shirt, I'm literally just coloring it in with a marker and then pulling it a bit with a water brush and calling it a day. So <laughs> I just, uh, it's, it's a struggle. Um, the big thing though, too, when you're doing any sort of no line work is you do need to put in that extra effort to add in the definition because you're losing a lot of it, a lot of that depth with um, like a black stamped line. So I I was getting kind of frustrated with it because I knew this would need a lot more work to be happy with it. Um, but I wanted to finish it and keep going. A lot of times if you just, you know, keep at it or set it aside, come back to it later, you know, your thoughts will change on something. Um, so I just kept filling everything in. I used the real brush markers. I've been really happy with these. I will do a more like in-depth review. 
Um, another thing too with people images obviously is when you do lo no line you lose all the definition if there's you know eyes etc. So first I went over the her eyes and her nose with just my Copic multi-liner. That was okay but you know because it brought back in that bit of definition and same with the little bird had a little little eye and little eyelashes. But then I was still like this no mm -mm, I wasn't happy with this. It was just not doing it for me. However um I started going back in with more color. I went in with some darker shades of some of the colors and, you know, just added that bit of shading and definition. That definitely helps adding in a second layer and just kind of deepening some of the colors. So I would just go in, scribble that on with the marker and then pull it out a bit with my water brush. And then I would just speed up the process with my heat tool just to dry it so I could go on to the next area. And the same thing with her hair. I added in some darker brown and that really helped as well. It just, you know, deepened it up, added that depth. So again, I was a little more happy with it, but I still, I just, it's so difficult. It, it was a struggle for me, honestly. <laughs> I just kept wanting to stop and then just stamp the image in black or heat emboss it like I always do and color it that way. But by this point, I'd put so much time and effort into this that I was like, I'm going to make this work. <laughs> So after I kind of added more of, you know, the darker color and the depth to it, um, I was still a little bit frustrated because I just, I like having the definition, I think, for me. I really like having the stamped outline. That's why I love stamping. I like having the stamped outline to color in. So I, on camera, this looks actually a lot better than it did, you know, when I was sitting there. But I still wanted a bit more definition. So actually what I ended up doing was pulling out, I have this Arteza set of fine line, um, fine liners. And they'd sent these to me. And honestly, I was like, I'll probably just use them to like write messages on the inside of my cards. You know, I'm not, I don't really do any pen work or anything like that. But they came in perfectly handy for something like this. I used coordinating colors and just traced over the stamped lines with those fine liners. So for her hair, I just used a brown fine liner and then I'm gonna use a red for her shirt and headband, a blue for the bird, etc. And I that made me much more happy with this. It didn't take very long to do all of this outlining and it was kind of funny, I had a flashback when I was doing this. It reminded me of like tracing things when I was in elementary school, that was like the rage before we had smartphones or computers or anything. We used to, you know, hold up coloring book pages to a window and trace them. And then we would, you know, sneak into the teacher's office and photocopy them so that we would all have the same pages to color over and over again. So I used to do that a lot. <laughs> that used to be our thing all the time is we would trace out pages of coloring books and anyway. Anyway, it was just a funny little flashback. So I just went along and re-outlined all the stamped images just using these fine liners. So I don't have that. So it's still kind of no line. I don't know what you'd call this. It's like Amy's way to fake it, I guess. So I, and, and same with like her hands because they're so, you know, such fine little details. So using the fine liner, you know, brought out a lot of that detail again. And then I went back over her eyes and the little bird eyes with the black fine liner and just deepened it a bit and that really helped finish it off. So once I had done all of that work, I was much more happy with it. And then I ended up doing the exact same thing. I stamped these gorgeous flowers from the same stamp set. I stamped those with that Ink on 3 fade out ink. I used the real brush pens from Arteza to watercolor these in and not being particularly super careful with them. But, um, and I'd done the same thing. I kind of added a little bit of deeper tones to it. And then for the stems and everything, I just used gray. Um, because this is for this week's color throwdown challenge, which is actually red, blue, and white. So you could totally go patriotic if you wanted. But I was in the mood to do something kind of floral. And this set, like I said, has been sitting out and I've been wanting to use it. So I did the exact same thing with these flowers as I did with the main image. After I was done coloring and everything's dry, I just outlined it all with these fine line pens again using a red for the red flowers a blue for the blue and then a gray to outline all of the stems I just liked that I just I do I really like that extra definition it gives so after I was done all of that outlining this did take a while my hand was starting to get a little bit sore I yeah it was still I don't know it's just something I'm gonna have to experiment more with it me and patience especially when it comes to um, what little time I have to do what I have it 
yeah, yeah. Anywho, anywho. <laughs> After everything's completely dry, I am going to die cut these with the coordinating wafer die set. And some people have been asking me about the washi tape I've been using to tape down my dies. Honestly, nine times out of ten, it is just Doodlebug brand washi tape. I don't link to it because these are from like previous collections. You know, I've been hoarding washi tape for years, years and years and years. It's not available anymore. Um, the previous, the rainbow color one I was using, I, I literally was getting a ton of emails about it and I had bought that honestly years ago. So it, when the, there are links, I always try to provide them, but with something like this, it's not available anymore. So apologies for that, but this is how I use my washi tape is to tape all my wafer dies in place. So that's what I did here. I taped everything in place, ran them all through my Gemini. So now all these images are die cut. And then I die cut a piece of Bristol Smooth cardstock with the largest of the A2 nesti nesting rectangles set two wafer dies from Wallflower that has a nice little stitch edge. And then I pulled out some Blueprint Sketch um, Distress Oxide ink. <laughs> and I'd actually meant to have a very much more subtle background. This is a brand new ink pad. It was super juicy. So there was a lot of ink on my blending tool and I stuck it on the cardstock and I'm like, oh dear, like I did not re-dip that blending tool into that ink pad and it covered that whole piece. So I went with it. Rather than having a very subtle black background, it was going to be much more blue. I didn't worry about getting it perfectly blended though. I just kept the ink still more concentrated in the center, but covered the whole background with it. Got everything out of the way there and I'm going to spray this with my distress sprayer to get that fun splatter effect. So I'm holding my distress sprayer like two feet off of the surface of my desk. Splattering it, I let it sit for about a minute and then I'm going to pick that up with paper towel and it reveals the magic. This, oh, that's why I love distress inks. They're so much fun. So um, did that and then I just used my heat tool to speed up the drying process on this piece. And then I'm going to start laying out all of these die cut flower images from this set. So once I'm kind of happy with the cluster and how I have it, um, I'm going to use my press and seal, which I've shown a lot in more recent videos. And I actually I moved when I mentioned in a video, I was moving things around in my office and I actually lost the piece of press and seal. It probably ended up in the garbage that I've been using the same one over and over again for months now. So I actually had to, get a fresh piece of press and seal. So now I can set this one aside and just keep reusing it. Cause I use it over and over again. Like I've had the same box of press and seal in my office for a couple years now. So I just take a small piece of it and then press it onto my background here so it can pick up all of these flowers and keep them in place. And then once I peel that back off, I can flip it over and then I'm gonna apply um, little 3D foam squares to the back of all of these flowers and then peel off the backing. And then I can pick up this press and seal, realign it over my background and then press these into place. So quick and easy and I don't have to keep fiddling with the placement. And that bottom one I purposely didn't press down because I accidentally got it on there crooked. So press that down into place and then I adhered my main image here with more of that um, foam adhesive. And then the um, card base is heavyweight white cardstock cut to four and a quarter by 11 and scored at five and a half. So this will be a top folding A2 sized card. And my sentiment, I just stamped the sentiment from the set onto some gray cardstock. I stamped it with the Ink on 3 Juicy Ink and heat embossed it with Simon's white detail embossing powder. Trimmed it down, adhered it with some more foam tape. And then I used my Xyron Mega Runner on the back of this panel and then adhered that to my card base. And then once I have that in place for the inside of my card, I just took another sentiment from the stamp set. I'm gonna ink that up with Simon's Slate ink. That's the same color as the gray cardstock I used on the front. And stamped the sentiment with Slate ink and then there's a little bird from the set and I stamped that with Simon's Blue Jay ink. It's just a nice, you know, shade of blue. I thought that would just finish it all off. So after stamping that, I'm gonna add some bling to this card, of course. So I pulled out some, I have some Studio Caudia Snow Crystals, which are the white ones, and then some Iridescent Clear Crystals, and liberally sprinkled these all over my card. So that I had just, I like the shimmer and the sparkle and whatnot. So once I was kind of happy with how many I had there, I'm just gonna pick those up with my jewel picker and then put down dabs of multi-medium matte adhesive and press those into place. 
And once I've got all of these jewels adhered, that it finishes off my card. So as always, I will have a link below the video to my blog post. I'll have a link to all the supplies used. I'll have a link to the color challenge, color throwdown challenge blog post as well, because it's open to everyone. It's always fun to see what people do with the same, you know, colors. So you can check that out in the description box below the video if you're interested. Thank you all so much for watching and subscribing and thumbs upping and commenting on my videos. I really appreciate it. And I will see you all very soon in the next one. Bye.